Welcome everyone in Nigeria and the rest of the world. This is State of the Nation. I am Gimba Umar. Right behind me, data feeds are still coming through on all our social media platforms in one place simultaneously. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba Umar CTV. Use the hashtag State of the Nation to air your thoughts. The Federal High Court has revoked the interim forfeiture order for bank accounts without the banker's verification number, the BVN, as a means of financial dealings and fighting corruption. The court said that some parts of the initial order presents unworkable measures. Professor Fidelis Odita, senior advocate of Nigeria, joins me on the show to have a clearer understanding of the legal implications of this. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining me on State of the Nation. Let's look at this from uh, uh, all sides. Let's look at it from the holder side of the accounts first. What does it mean to them? Because no one wants to lose hard-earned money. Yes, uh, thank you, Yumba. I think one has to understand the purpose of the BBM. If you want to establish a bank account, one of the things that the bank would require you to do is to provide a certain amount of information. The bank verification number is simply an additional um, information which the bank captures as part of the KYC on the, your customer. That's the purpose of the BBN. It's not there as something entirely gratuitous for the bank's own amusement. Now, in a country like Nigeria, and indeed many other countries where serious organized and non-organized crimes have become matters of great concern, I think it is in all our interests as Nigerians, as members of the public, to ensure that we actually know the identities of people who hold deposits in financial institutions. Now, looking at the angle that seeks, uh, just taking it from where, where you just stopped now, looking at the angle that seeks to fight corruption, how much comes to bear when BVN is employed to check illegal transactions? Is, it, is this formula winning at all? Is it what? Is the formula winning? I don't know. I think we need to ask um, the central bank, which is the repository of information. But my own understanding is that about 30 to 40 percent of account holders in Nigeria have provided their BVN, and the BVN has greatly assisted in unmasking faceless account holders who hide behind pseudonyms and impersonate others to hold accounts in which significant sums of money are held. So I think to that extent, the BVN introduces a necessary degree of transparency into banking operations and also helps us in the fight against organized and serious crime. So one would argue that uh, the government and fighting corruption are uh, perhaps different sides of the same coin regarding this BVN. But if the government policies are not completely successful or uh, not complete uh, proof, you may run into problems such as this one that uh, we're looking at by the courts saying that some of the terms are unworkable. What do you think about this? What must be done by the government in partnership with the agencies fighting this corruption just so that we have a foolproof system and a formula that works for all? I think um, the basic objective is entirely laudable, desirable and necessary. We must then go back and fine-tune the BBM regulations to ensure that they strike the appropriate balance between um, ensuring that we have information regarding the identity, the true identity of account holders on one hand, and on the other hand, that we do not penalize innocent account holders who, for one reason or another, are unable to provide a BDN, especially for the depositors who are in diaspora, and some of whom have not visited Nigeria um, for two or three years. I think also the arrangements that have been made abroad for the capture of the BDN numbers of depositors in the diaspora cannot be said to be entirely satisfactory. I know in the case of England, for example, the banks have designated two or three locations for the capture of that information. That is grossly inadequate. If I live in Scotland or a remote part of uh, London Ireland, why should I be required to travel to London just to come and leave the bank my biodata, my thumbprint, so they would have to capture my BDN without being offered any 
expense allowance for doing so. So I think that there is a problem with how they capture that information, especially for those in the diaspora. And there may be others who are locally based in Nigeria who, are, who face uh, challenges in getting their BBN captured. But having said that, I think we should simplify the regulations and perhaps create um, safe harbors and transition provisions for those who are not able to comply for genuinely good reasons. Not necessarily for those exemptions and safe harbors to be available to criminals in Nigeria who are either engaged in terrorism or money laundering or drug trafficking or other serious crimes. We must try and unmask them, and I think it is in the public interest that they are masked. The challenge to media regulations and the federal high court cannot be seen to be a victory for such people because we have a collective responsibility to fight yes. serious um. crimes. That would be a good place to anchor it. Many thanks indeed uh, uh, for giving us an insight into the implications, the legal implications of all this. Uh, Fidelis Odita, Senior Advocate of Nigeria.